Ladies and gentlemen, with me today, Leon Luc Mendonca. I'm very, very happy to have you back. And we are talking about how does a chess day for a professional chess player look like? Hi, Ani. Thank you very much. And thank you for bringing me on the show. And uh, yeah, I'm doing great. If you are playing that many games, how can you keep the condition and your mind at focus and not like literally burn out? Honestly, I don't do anything too special, but also it wasn't like us playing tournament after tournament. I was maybe taking like one week break or sometimes even 10 days break in between. But yeah, it wasn't like, like totally cramped up in these whole five months. And um Yeah, I don't do any, anything special because I don't I don't feel too tired. I'm just playing, I'm enjoying and and my result, results were pretty decent, I think. So yeah, I guess it was yeah, I don't feel tired too easily. Yeah, so I wake up at about um, seven to seven thirty, something like this, more like eight to nine hours of sleep. And yes, yeah, the, the usual. I have to immediately ask you, is this something very important for you? Eight to nine hours of sleep is quite a lot compared to a lot of other people. <laughs> is this something where you go like, I'm just taking care, I need my sleep? Or do you go like, sometimes I just sleep four or five hours and that's fine? No, I usually just sleep around eight, eight to nine hours. And Perfect. that's normal. I, I think it's just a chess player thing. <laughs> is I it? Mean, okay. Not to generalize, but most people I've met sleep quite a lot. Huh. But <laughs> yeah, I heard no, but, like uh, from yeah. a scientific point of view that if you sleep, this is the point in time where you memorize everything you learned. So if you're having a very good sleep, you actually uh, remember more what you have learned. Okay, so you sleep eight to nine hours. You wake up around uh, seven, seven uh, thirty, something in that point. Yeah, yeah. Then after the usual morning routine, breakfast and stuff. I would start at about 9, 9.30, something like this. Mm -hmm. Nothing fixed. I mean, I don't have to start sharp at nine or something. It's just whenever I'm ready, I start. And yeah, I go on until about 1 to 1.30, something like this. And then I take a break, lunch, and probably start back at about 2.30, 2 to 2.30. And okay. Yeah, then a bit more of work until... Five to five thirty. Again, it's nothing fixed. It's just general, very general. You also have a coach, as far as I know. Obviously, um, yeah. yeah. Do you generally also read chess books, or is this something where it's like, Arnie, it's twenty twenty three. Sorry, this, those times are over. Or no, no. For me, it's not like that, at least. And uh, I mean, chess reading chess books comes under like working. Like the, during the time which I work, mm -hmm. it comes under that period. So I, I do all, whatever I feel like doing and during that time. Yeah. Okay, wow. So you have to motivate yourself to to do all of this, I guess. If you if, if you say this is kind of a feeling, after all, this is also something where you have to push yourself and go like, okay, it's like 9.30, <laughs> time to do something which uh, I have to improve in? I think the motivation comes naturally. It's not like something I have to work for. I, oh, wow. I mean, most people who are generally uh, passionate about something, you don't need motivation for it. It's just there. So it's more like, what should I be doing rather than, ah, oh, I have to do something. <laughs> oh, nice. Excellent. So, yeah, so part of your passion is to improve. Let's say last week or something like that, or the couple of weeks before, you wake up, it's nine o'clock, and you go like, okay, time to put on the laptop or computer, time to, I guess you, chess space is a must. I, I yeah, assume. you have to, I mean, nowadays you can't survive without chess space, and uh, I think pretty much everybody has chess space these days. So, so I chess, mean, it's just, yeah, chess space is on, then maybe an engine, and then you. Do what? <laughs> <laughs> no, like engine, I use engines mostly only for opening work. And All right. Because, yeah, the rest of the stuff I either just read or I try to analyze myself. Okay. But uh, the engine stuff is mostly only for opening. 
on some days i just feel like analyzing a game just random a random game this is pretty much random i've selected so just one day i wake up i fascinate ah i would like to see some uh, Kas- one of kasparov's games in the night of sh- scavening and whatever uh-huh. uh, with black then i see then i see oh he's played quite a few games against topalo Th- these encounters must be quite interesting so i take the first game this is for example i think the first or second time they met mm-hmm. probably the first in a night of and uh, i think yeah topalo must have been quite young and uh, pretty much upcoming at that time yeah 1994 so thought, my goodness mm-hmm. yeah and to beat kaspero with uh, <laughs> white in the olympiad especially definitely it must be quite an interesting game so I just take up a game like this uh-huh. and start analyzing or rather annotating it by myself. Huh. So, oh, this is what I mean oh, by okay. analyzing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you're annotating it yourself too and put in your own thoughts and then you mm-hmm. check like is this a good thought? Is this an interesting thought? What makes this game special? Something like that? In the beginning when I used to do this, I used to be quite concerned like what if I'm analyzing is complete nonsense here? Yeah? and uh, uh-huh. what if it's like complete rubbish and i think it's pretty decent but then soon i realized like uh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're analyzing nonsense as long as you're analyzing because um during the game you, you're not really using the computer right so what you're analyzing you, whatever you're analyzing makes a difference and di- difference and so i'm just trying to improve my anal- analysis skills rather than finding out like the truth or something in the position that's what i learned after some time Wow, this is actually quite fascinating to be honest. So, can you give uh, so what did you do in in this example here? You just took a yeah. look at the first couple of moves and then there's of course a, a G4 H6. Yeah, for example, I just used the live database to see like where exactly did the theory end at that time because it's hard to know 30 years back, right? Mm-hmm. So, I just see okay, this seems to be pretty mainline. There are some games bishop e2 so this is where i've written i think this at the time of the game this was the first new move so for example date if i put press on date you see this is the first game in the position oh my Resume. goodness so they are they i they made this novelty happen kind of is that correct or i guess so but i'm pretty sure at least one of the players must have analyzed something <laughs> but i don't think it was too deep yeah, okay. without engines especially you can't expect like too deep and correct an- analysis gotcha so, yeah so i just said uh, like this must have been approximately the first new moment of the game mhm and so what i do is at each position like for example okay this is the first position i start thinking as black like what would i play as black so i start analyzing different possibilities then once i think of a move i would play in the game i uh, see first of all if the move has been played in the game then i leave it and try to analyze the other options with whatever else was possible in the position just try to get maximum out of the position uh-huh. try to understand what is going on once i've done that for example here i've analyzed queen b6 i think is a mistake because the P- b2 pawn is like pretty much poisoned you can say uh-huh. and just something like queen b queen d3 with the idea of long castles let's say take here here this is just what i've analyzed and the queen is trapped so that's why queen b6 doesn't make sense you can't really take the pawn <laughs> so just an analysis like this just trying to analyze at each moment get the maximum out of the position so what does can you try to describe uh, what this is helpful for that you're analyzing it yourself i can make my own sense out of it but maybe from you it would be a bit more <laughs> more uh, compelling i think it's mainly just improving analytical abilities because during the game like you have to be able to analyze well right hmm. and in just in general to become a better chess player you have to analyze there's there's no chess player no good chess player who doesn't know how to analyze so it's just improving of analytical abilities would you advise that uh, an amateur player or somebody who has a bit of a lower rating that they also just pick out some random interesting high level chess game from the mega database then maybe their favorite player and then they just go and analyze it or can you give a tip and trick what to uh, do in that case it's a tricky question because mm-hmm. i started doing this during the pandemic like maybe when i was about 2400 i am level and i honestly don't know like how exactly would it 
how exactly an experience would it be for an amateur to try and mm-hmm. do this but i would recommend in the beginning you can try and read as uh, like annotated games or uh, read books with annotated games so that well your knowledge improves first of all and you learn how to do it mm-hmm. and uh, i honestly don't know at what level you should do this maybe you can do it like that from the beginning like at an amateur level of course like the analysis won't be like you can't expect it to be really good or something but it'll improve your an- analytical abilities at least and that's what's important it's not like what the engine thinks and what is the truth in the position something like this mm-hmm. so i i think it can be interesting if you like it then you can try it but what i did at, at least and what most people do at least uh, right these days is just to read books or go through some annotated games how long does it take for you to analyze a game like this i guess it completely depends on the game obviously and do, maybe yeah. do do you also discover some games where you go after like 10 moves like i understand i get this idea let's go to the next one <laughs> not really no no <laughs> like there are always hidden hidden things like for example this game right yeah it is how many moves Oh 29 moves. Goodness, Seems like a pretty your short analysis short game. there. I can't believe it. <laughs> no, it's nothing much actually. Like uh-huh. if you go if you go and see Gary Kasparov's uh my great predecessor you'll paint. <laughs> okay, I okay. painted at least. <laughs> and I was like really sick <laughs> because it was too much for me to handle. So uh-huh. this is nothing. So, but what I'm uh, saying is that um like how much time for example this game took about about 5 hours but it's not like uh, it has to take this much time it's more like uh, you you should be convinced that you've analyzed the important details at least and it's mainly convincing yourself that you've done a good job and well analyzed a bit mm-hmm. so it mm-hmm. can take maybe one hour it can take 15 hours i don't know depends on how much analysis you do i'm pretty sure i i could have analyzed a lot more here but i think i was pretty much happy with what i did mm-hmm. so i left it can you show our viewers for those of you who are interested in to um picking a random game how you are picking a random game i guess you use the mega database and then you just pick a chess player or yeah show us the steps so we are at mega database mm mm-hmm. Okay so how do I select a game first of all i would think of a player like which player depends one day i wake up it's kasparov the next day it might be ivanchuk doesn't make a difference <laughs> whoever i feel like uh-huh. so for example the day i was talking about that game which i analyzed i uh, picked out kasparov versus ivanchuk and because i heard their encounters were quite interesting and especially in those days like most of the top players were kind of afraid of kasparov it's quite well known i think because he was really the dominant giant over there and he pretty much dominated for i don't know 20 years 10 20 years something like this so there were some guys who were like most of them really respected them but i've heard like ivanchuk he was like one of a kind at that time at least <laughs> and he was very creative and yeah just a child of the game you can say mm-hmm. and they definitely had some very interesting encounters so i decided okay let me try kasparov versus ivanchuk one of the games then the next day ah why not kasparov versus topalov <laughs> because i saw in one of the one of while analyzing some openings in the night of or something i think i saw ah quite a few games between uh, topalov and kasparov these might these might be quite interesting so that's pretty much how i picked up that game mm-hmm. and it's how i pick up most games honestly but sometimes when i don't know like which game to pick up i just pick a player and like for example let's say aronia yeah then i try to f- go to like w- which were his peak years his peak years were between i think the years 2005 to 2015 i mean not not that he's not a strong player right now but this, these were the years where he was peaking he sure. in his career Yeah, yeah, 2007 2800 at one point too, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's say I go here like here for example. He's 2800 years. Yeah. So it must around this time would have been his peak, I guess. Mm. So, we just pick out again. <laughs> <laughs> It's that simple. It's, 
not really too difficult. Yeah. I've not seen this game before. Maybe I should analyze the next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how easy it happens. I got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, in the mega database, yeah. So, uh, does it uh, is it important for you that you already have some annotations and some commentary, or do you go like, I'll just take it? Because normally, the ones who have annotation and commentary are the ones who are a bit special anyway, right? Yeah. No, in the beginning, I was picking out the games with annotations, and mm -hmm. I would uh, leave the annotations as it is mm -hmm. and uh, add my own one, like something which is not, like for example, if I wanted to analyze a move somewhere here, right? Yeah. And it's not mentioned, then I would put my name there to mention that it is my thing and not the annotator, and that's how I would add my notes. But also sometimes when the games are a bit old, like during the 1990s, most of the annotations are just wrong. And uh, because they're uh -huh. done mainly in a hurry and just for the bulletin, right? So I don't really trust those annotations. And so I just remove with this button right here. Delete all variations and commentary. Just press that and uh -huh. do my own thing. Ah, uh, excellent. Okay, good, good. Great tips. For you at home, don't you worry. We are going to come back with a couple of more things, which will be probably as insightful or even more interesting for you. Thank you so much, Leon. We will see each other soon again. Thank you very much.